What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I've got a really awesome tool to show you. It's open source, free to download, unfortunately not made by me like the account switcher. It's the Compact GUI tool. Essentially, you can compress games and programs and save a ton of disk space. This works especially well for large games, though of course you can compress pretty much anything. The example I have here is Arc Survival Evolved. Using their new UI, it takes about four minutes to compress everything, and of course saves you quite a bit of space. How much do you save? Well, Arc Survival Evolved, 169 gigabytes of disk space down to just 91, and Adobe Photoshop 1.7 to just 800 megabytes. So should you compress your programs and games? While you can, it may not necessarily be the absolute best thing. As they mentioned somewhere on this page here, on newer hardware and powerful CPUs, compression really doesn't matter. Whether you're using programs that are compressed or not, the performance shouldn't be too different. Though I'd only steer away from this in CPU demanding games and applications, but if it's GPU limited and you have tons of CPU headroom available, well, this is something you can definitely do and you can save a ton of drive space. Regardless, you may want to compress things, you may want to uncompress things. You can do that all from within the application here, and there's even different modes that we can choose from. For now, I'll head up to the very top, look for releases on the far right hand side, and click the releases header right over here. Then we'll be taken across to a page here with a bunch of different pre-release version 3.0s. In the future, of course, this won't be alpha anymore, you can just download the latest release. Scrolling down a little bit, you'll see some info on what you need, and you'll see these two over here. We can download Compact GUI if we have .NET 6 runtime installed, but if we don't, we can download everything, it's about 150 megs, but you won't need to do anything extra. Though it takes it from 50 megs of extra downloading to 150, so you may not want to do this. For me, I'll expand assets down here, and I'll download just the EXE as I already have .NET 6 installed. If you don't, in the description down below, you'll find a download link to .NET 6. You'll see a page that looks something like this. 6.07, on the left hand side you'll see the SDK, we don't want this. ASP.NET Core, we don't want this. What we want is .NET Desktop Runtime, but we'll choose x64 over here. Then simply open it up and follow through with the installation as you would anything else. When it's done, we can open the EXE we previously downloaded. So, Compact GY. I'll hit OK here on this intro pop up, and essentially we can pick a folder where we can start compressing things. What you'd want to do now is navigate across to, say, C drive, or whatever drive you find is really full. Program files, Steam, for example, Steam apps, common, and inside of here, I have a few different games, or rather, a few different programs. Maybe you'd need to look on other drives. Anyway, I'll be compressing, say, the survivalists over here. Right click properties. This is about 700 megs on my disk right about now. So I'll select it here, select folder, and inside of Compact GY, we can simply click Compress, and it'll give us the estimated size over here. We can change the compression mode to different options here, which should give us a better compression, but the lower you go down on this list, the more CPU it'll take to decompress when you're trying to run it. It won't be a huge amount, especially on these options up here, but the LZX option down here, may be a bit CPU intense, especially on lower end computers, so you may want to stay away from it. You can see down here on the bottom of the info page, Express 4K, fastest but weakest, 8K, reasonable balance between speed and compression, 16K, slower but stronger, and finally LZX, the slowest but strongest, higher overhead, so use it on programs and games only if your CPU is reasonably strong or the game is older. Awesome. So because this is a super simple game, with nothing too intense happening, I'll select the strongest mode, which isn't recommended. If you're compressing a different game, that could be a 3D Unreal Engine, Unity Engine game, you may want to pick Express 8 or 16, and that's really about it. So, super tiny game, super easy to run, I'll select LZX. We can choose to skip poorly compressible file types. This program won't attempt to compress at all, may be useful to keep ticked. We can also choose to watch for folder changes, so this program will run in the background and when the game updates, it'll automatically compress all of the files once more. So I can click compress over here and it'll start compressing our game files. But regardless, you can see it went from 730 to just 600 megabytes, 18% smaller, and we can submit results down here if you'd like. And of course, we can choose to uncompress in the bottom left if we don't like how the game is. At the very bottom of the screen, when we hover, we can choose the Compress GUI, or we can choose this little clock icon over here to see what watched folders we have. 
Of course, if we added the folder and told it to watch it, it would appear in this list here, and I assume we can also remove it. If we click settings in the top right, we can choose certain file types to skip. And of course, we can add to the context menu as well, so we can right-click files and folders on our computer and simply compress things that way. So for example, I'll make a new folder on my desktop, I can right-click it, and inside of here, compress folder. Clicking it, it'll say the program's already running, I'll close it, then run it again, and it'll tell us how much we can actually save by running this program. Would I recommend doing this on games with strong anti-cheats? Maybe not, I don't think it would have any effect really, as Compact.exe, the program behind this, or the Windows APIs that they are using, are built into Windows and official Windows features. The likelihood of them causing anything going wrong in competitive games with strong anti-cheats is incredibly low, though you may want to avoid it just in case. Pulling up a question from the GitHub here, talking about the issue. A game can check if its files are compressed, as a program can do, but when a file is opened, if the program doesn't explicitly check, it can't see a difference. That's why this compression is said to be transparent, because the compression is transparent to the program or game, and they've never heard about a ban for compressing files. The file itself is not modified. Can you be banned because you play games in an SSD or HDD? It's near to be the same question. So there's a super simple answer for this. But if you're super paranoid, you're welcome to stay away from it. Usually you'd only use this on say, really small SSDs to squeeze every bit of performance out of it, and I wouldn't recommend doing this on all of the files on your computer, as in you may want to avoid your Windows directory, for example, but compressing games, applications, and other things like that, you're more than welcome to go ahead with that. Of course, because we can choose the compression type as well, it does differ from the default compression on Windows. If I right-click Properties of this file, Advanced, you can see we can compress to save disk space, and of course it'll compress this file to save some space, though it should only be a small amount, at least relative to the compression that this program will give us. Pulling up the properties for the survivalists over here, the game that I previously compressed, you can see 735 megs, 602 on disk, Advanced, and it doesn't say that it's compressed here because it's compressed elsewhere. Awesome. Let's try a bigger game. I'll click the search here, and this time navigate across to one of my more full drives, games, Steam, Steam apps, common, and let's compress something bigger here. Let's compress, say, Doom, 68.6 .6 gigs. I'll select it, select folder, and we may not save that much because of, obviously, how certain file types are. Only certain things can be compressed, which we should see here, it should skip quite a few files. But hey, let's just do it anyway. I'll click Compress, and pulling across my Task Manager, you can see I'm being bottlenecked by my hard drive over here. Essentially, reading and writing to the same hard drive usually results in a huge bottleneck and things being really slow. If you're using this tool on an SSD, more often than not, it'll be really fast, and the thing limiting you will be your CPU. And there we go, it's now done. I closed the GUI in the meanwhile, but it kept running in the background as it was taking quite a while. Anyway, Doom, we've saved three gigabytes as they estimated. Not bad. In the meanwhile, while this was compressing, I downloaded the entirety of New World to my SSD here. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, New World, and as you can see, 50 gigs. I can right click and compress it, otherwise I can reopen the program, select the folder, and you can see I'll save probably a gig on this. Not too much, but you'll get really different results depending on what game. Arc, for one of them, is incredibly not compressed. There's a lot of duplicate files, I would assume, or duplicate bits of code, because the download is relatively small and it expands to huge sizes on your drive, meaning there's tons that you can save. Anyways, it's a really cool tool to save at least a little bit of drive space, especially if you're really stressing for any extra space that you can get, i.e. having Windows on a really small SSD, as well as games in it as well. Anyways, that's really about it for this Quick video, thank you all for watching. Marty's been taking over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.